good afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture. In today's special lecture on symbolic expression, we have with us Ms. Manisha who is going to translate the lecture in sign language. In today's lecture, the topic is sociological perspective. So, we are going to understand sociological perspective that help us to understand social reality. Now, one of the ways in which we understand society is to look into two kinds of issues. One is macro level issues and the second is micro level and perspectives are different. The macro sociology perspective denotes large, large reality, large uh, kind of understanding. So, the sociologists study large scale social phenomena, perspectives that is concerned with broad aspect of society such as institutions, large social groups and how these institutions and social group influences social world. So, if we were to understand the emergence of capitalism and its impact on society, we will use a macro perspective. The level of analysis in macro sociology is large, is a big picture of society. So, there is a lot of generalization. The impact of capitalism is generalized as in terms of changes that has happened in most society. So, most of the society with the coming of capitalism has moved towards private property. So, that is how sociologists will make sense of it. In the classical sociology, we had the functionalist approach, the structural functionalist and conflict theory which were at the level of macro analysis. The other is micro perspective. Micro sociology is looking at smaller level changes. So, it is looking at psychological dynamics of individual interacting in small group, small actions, individual level action and they are not trying to arrive at any generalization. They will arrive at specificity. So, they look at how families, co-worker, small groups of people interact. For instance, if we were to understand the way in which industrial workers live their life, the focus will be to pick up some industry and understand the interaction among the worker why they interact, the way they are doing, how they interpret the meaning, interaction that will affect the larger social setting and therefore, the micro sociology, the focus is on everyday experience, everyday interaction taking place at the level of family, at the level of office workers, at the level of smaller groups. So, if we go to understand the emergence of social media impacting children behavior. So, the study will be only to look into the age group of say 8 to 14 years children and try to understand the impact on their everyday life. The micro sociology perspective was influenced by symbolic interactionism and that would include the work of Herbert Mead, Herbert Blauner and Erwin Goffman. These were looking into symbolic interaction taking place at everyday life and understanding society from the perspective of individual. So, the first is symbolic interactionism, the perspective which is at the level of micro sociology. So, the focus is on interaction of individual and how they interpret the interaction. So, it, the emergence of symbolic interactionism can be traced back to the early 90s where American sociologist, social psychologist and philosopher were interested in human consciousness and action. So, if we see this was the outfall of too much of emphasis on rationality, science and therefore, the, there was a move from quantified understanding of society to qualitative understanding. How we understand meanings, how we understand symbols because meaning attached to a particular object 
symbol symbolic object changes. For instance, if we kind of give a very commonsensical example, a gun can have a different meaning. In the hand of the terrorist, it could be a symbol of violence, whereas the same gun in the hands of the army can be a protective weapon. So, the, the context changes, the interaction of social action changes and the meaning changes. This is what symbolic interactionism was trying to make sense of. Symbolic interactionism is very popular today. Why? Because many sociologists objected to what was seen as deterministic view of human thought. So, we as sociologists are not passive. Neither is the person who is studying reality uh, passive, nor the people involved in that study are passive. There is a two-way communication. So, what needs to be understood is not reality out there to be measured, not out there to be generalized, but to be understood and to exchange the meaning among each other. The first person who kind of understood symbolic uh, interactionism is George Herbert Mead. In his work, Mind, Self and Society, he emphasized on how the social world develops various mental states in an individual. So, each one of us think differently. Each one of us makes sense of the reality differently. Now, how do we then understand reality? We have to look into the interaction between the mind, the individual and the society in which one is living. So, the self is seen as an acting organism, not as a passive respectacle that res receives and responds to stimuli. As Durkheim and Parson or the positive school argued, they argued that society was a passive. You just in understand the reality as it is. Symbolic interactionism says no, it is not possible. We need to look into the changes that is taking place in everyday interaction. People are not merely media that can be put into action by appropriate stimuli, but that we are thoughtful and reflective creature whose identities and action arise as a result of our interaction with others. So, if we look into Durkheim in his study of uh, the society, uh, the totemism, he said that in a collective get together, all members of the clan seeing the totem on their body became part of the religious phenomena. But here, he negated the idea that an individual because of his own experience may not want to be a part of the collective. So, in that sense, he will not go look into the totem, it will have a different meaning for him. It will not force him to be a part of the collectivity, but it could instill the question of resent, the question of questioning the social order. So, that is what the symbolic interactionists are trying to tell us. Herbert Mead distinguished human action from non-human animals is that humans have the ability to delay the reaction to a stimulus. You know, we kind of have that capacity to reject the stimulus. We not always passively take in all of it. So, Mead thought it more important that only human can adjust a action by using significant or meaningful symbols. You know, so the, the whole idea of being a part of the collective will depend on how much of meaning we are attaching to a particular symbol. So, we could be reality could then be interpreted according to the meaning that individual attached to the object. So, as a result of this greater intelligence that human beings have, they can think, 
they can reflex and it is very important to understand that every individual is not necessarily going to give consent. There will be rebellion, there will be people who will question, critique the reality and that is how we will get to know the other side of the society. So, for instance, if we continue to go by certain myths and nobody critiques it, then the reality will remain unchanged. If we want to see the other side or we want to see the change in institution, we have to be critical about it. We have to react to the reality and not kind of just instinctively respond to the social stimuli. Mead notes that human actions have three characteristics. They are able to organize their mind concerning the array of possible responses. So, every individual in act, social action have multiple of uh, choice and as an individual, he or she can opt for one over the other. Now, how do we decide which one we choose is dependent on our personality, on how we interact a biography with the social milieu. That interaction helps us to make a choice. So, if the whole idea that there is a vacancy for say to join the army, not everybody goes for it, only some goes. There could be a family history, there could be an individual decision, it could also be a pressure from the society, from peer group to be a part of the army. So, that is how we are able to differentiate between the choice available and react accordingly. The second is humans can consider the likely implication of different action and test possible outcome mentally in their own minds. So, the whole idea that if one takes the decision to join the army, one knows the consequences and therefore knowing the consequences and thinking what could be the future, one will take the decision accordingly. The third human behavior is that there are range of stimuli that impinge upon an individual. A human need not to react to the immediate stimulus, but may react to one of the lesser stimuli. So, one needs to wait. Many a people say that let us not take a cho make a choice in a hurried manner. Let us wait, let us th observe how things are going and then make a choice. The second is symbolic interactionist is Herbert Blumer. Herbert Blumer, a sociologist at the University of Chicago, built upon the writings to develop symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism feel that people do not merely learn the roles that society has set out for them. Instead, they construct this role as they interact. So, we know that with globalization, with capitalism, a lot of traditional occupations are no longer continued. Now, why does this happen? This happened because the children or the new generation questioned the traditional occupation and they were of opinion that if they continued in the same traditional occupation, their earning would not be high. So, they wanted to join occupations which are immersed in the contemporary context and would reward them with higher compensation. So, we do not take on the role as it is. As individual human being, having a capacity to think and reflect, we change our roles and status in society. As they interact, they negotiate the definition of the situation in which they find themselves and socially construct the reality. So, rather than taken for granted given reality, it is not always out there. We need to understand the social construction of reality. So, we cannot just take on what our fathers or God uh, forefathers continued to do. We look into the reality where certain occupations have a higher income compared to the other and therefore, make a decision to change the occupation. Individuals rely heavily on symbols 
to reach a shared understanding of their interaction. Another perspective that we look need to look into is Erwin Goffman's. Erwin Goffman was an American sociologist who looked into everyday human interaction to develop theories of human behavior and society. He used the framework of dramaturgy to portray people as actors whose actions are shaped by the type of interaction. So, he is comparing the social life as a drama as we have the actors and the actress and the other parts of the drama enacting their reality, social life is the compared to be the same. Each individual is seen as performing and the performance is not predicted, it is not kind of set a same for every actor. Every actor has to enact the role assigned depending on the stage of the drama in which one is part. So, reality is changing just as the scenes of a drama changes. Elfin Goffman relied less on formal scientific method than on observation to explain contemporary li life. So, we just kind of not understand social reality as a scientific reality. There is lot of things that is based on emotions, on the mental capacity, psychological frame of mind and individual as actor takes the interaction between mind and society to perform his part. The, the another theory which is equally important is ethnomethodology. Ethnomethodology means people's methodology. It is to study the social world in which people live. Ethnomethodology is a perspective within sociology which focuses on the way people make sense of their everyday life. Harlot Gelfinkel uses the term ethnomethodology to designate the methods individual use in daily life to construct the reality through intimate exchange of meanings in conversation. Ethnomethodologists they argue that in order to understand conception of object and events, the sociologist must examine routine, practical activities of everyday life. The bear resemblance to symbolic interactionism. So, more or less, they are both symbolic interactionism and ethnomethodology. The focus is on how reality is constructed, the emphasis is on meaning the emphasis on interpretative understanding and these meanings are not fixed. The meaning are changing and they emerge in the interaction between people. So, we cannot objectively understand them. The Alfred schools had developed phenomenological reconstruction of Marx Weber's Wersterhen sociology. So, phenomenology is another perspective developed by Alfred Schoos. It developed around symbolic interactionism and the idea that society is made by people rather than the other way around. Social phenomena are seen as social construct. The family for example is not an objective social fact, but rather something that only makes sense in terms of what people mean by the word and what they mean can change over time or between society. So, we see the family can be a nurturing ground as for socialization, but then for feminist it could be a space where inequality emerges. So, how we attach meaning would differ in terms of the way in which we look into the social institution. Phenomenologists see the social world in relative terms than the physical world. The society around us are relative, there is nothing fixed and the meaning changes from the context to context. So, object in the physical world do exist physically, so it is out there, whereas object in the social world do not exist physically. 
they change, the meaning changes, the way we look into that object also changes. So concepts like crime, love and family are entirely human creation, dependent on human perceptions and interpretation. So phenomenology is the study of human consciousness and way people make sense of the world around us. So we see by looking into the micro sociologist, make mainly symbolic interactionism, ethnomethodology and phenomenology, we see how the perspective in sociology has also changed from positivism to interpretive sociology to understanding meaning in everyday life to looking at social reality as a construct is the way in which sociologists make sense of society. With this, I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.